This is a little pink selfie light and the idea is that you clip it over a camera or your mobile phone like that so the lens is uh, pointed through this hole. It doesn't really matter where it would be in the hole. Ideally, it would be dead centre. But what it does is when you click the button at the end, it lights in three different intensity settings and it means that instead of the light being directional, let me demonstrate that. Instead of the light being directional in the sense that at this bench I do have directional lighting, the ideal setup for this bench would have been a bench in the middle of a completely clear room with white walls and the light coming from all directions so that no matter where anything was in the room it would be lit from all sides and it would be very clear. But in this case, I've, this is our actual working bench. This is the bench I build stuff at. So I've got two lights up here, so they're out of the way, and they shine down from underneath shelving. And there's an avalanche of stuff happening because I just put that camera oh, put it over there. But uh, it results in very directional lighting. With a ring light, you, it's commonly used in sort of like studio type shots where you want even illumination. It Because the light is physically coming from all directions, let me try and demonstrate this with a... Uh, let me demonstrate with a little circuit board here. If I turn this on, if I hold it up to the camera and I turn it on, it's not going to be super bright compared to the other lights and it's also going to be a bit out of focus. But you can see it is illuminating that all round, but it's also giving a strong reflection, which is a slight downside. Um, the quality of pictures this can produce in the right circumstance are pretty good. This was taken with that little ring light on this exact camera. And uh, you can see that it's illuminated it from all sides. And that was done with the main light out, so that this was the main uh, source of light. Because at the moment, the lights up here are actually sort of swamping everything out because the exposure is set to that level. But this was recommended to me a while back, and I'd been looking at them thinking, should I get one of those? And I wasn't sure about it. It turns out they're okay, but they do create sometimes... If the circuit board's shiny, they do create a circle of uh, lights on the circuit, the circuit board or quite a sharp arc across it. So you have to be careful how you use them. The power supply is just two AAA cells. In this case, I've got uh, rechargeable cells. This is a good idea because the button on the side that uh, turns it on, uh, uh, let's, uh, it's, it's one of those battery holders. The button side that turns it on is very easy to bump, and when you do bump it, it just stays on until uh, the battery is completely flat. So um, that's worth uh, mentioning in case you, you put something down you don't see it's turned on. It does have those three settings. It's worth noting that it pulses modulates the LEDs, so you can get a rolling shutter effect sometimes uh, depending on the frame rate of the camera as such and the exposure time. So I've already had a wee pry at this to see if I could get the... Uh, front off, but I didn't want to just pop it completely off because that would be like cheating, wouldn't it? That would be like uh, going ahead and taking things apart before you were here to see it as well. It also means that uh, I, I could use it a few times before bursting it, which I may be about to do. Oh, this is making extremely scrunchy noises. Talk about exposure, I'm completely overexposing this, aren't I? Mainly because it is quite bright, but that's okay. It's better overexposed slightly than underexposed. It'd be nice, uh, I've never found the perfect camera for this bench type arrangement. Uh, it would uh, have a very soft exposure control. It'd be multi-point exposure. It'd be, yeah, uh, when you get into using cameras for recording videos, uh, suddenly you realise that uh, not one camera ever seems to really do everything. This has knocked me off easily. This has uh, really knocked me off easily. Am I going to burst this? Let's burst it then. It doesn't really matter. Oh, I've burst it. Bang on cue. There we go. So what do we have here? It's a ring of LEDs which I presume are in parallel. Yes, they are in parallel. And they've got a little tab here. Is this going to come off as well? It's not going to reveal an awful lot because... Well, let's get it off anyway. It's just revealing the wires going down through there. Uh, they're going down through a little stem, which then, as you pin through it, it's a, a spring in there. That just uh, It's just to hide the wires and guide them down into the base here. Let's get the base off. What is there going to be? There's going to be a little circuit board next to that button. It's really not going to be a huge amount. It's going to have a mic controller on it. It's going to have a transistor to switch to LEDs and maybe a resistor. 
Oh, it'll have a boost circuit for the, uh, to step up the voltage from the uh, batteries. Oh, it's a bigger circuit board than I was expecting, but that's because they brought it round here. Let's uh, zoom in on this. So they've brought the uh, the circuit board round so it can actually double up as uh, the battery connection point. So let's take this screw out. And lever that up. So there's a, there's for the uh, little cable carriers coming down. So when you push that down, it pretty much goes right up to the circuit board. There is what looks like the resistor, 2.7 ohms, for the uh, out the LEDs. I'm going to change the exposure here because it does seem a little bit harsh, does it not? Um, I'm not sure how... Where, where's my exposure point here? Oh, this isn't actually... This isn't going very well. Let's uh, focus down onto the circuit board and uh, if I zoom back in again, this will also set the exposure point. Oh, it's not going to tame down the exposure. Oh, well, that's the exposure we're getting. So what we have here is... I'm going to have to pause anyway. I'm going to have to take a look at these. There's actually a couple little chips here. What is that about? Right, one moment, please. Well, this circuit board is incredibly annoying. This chip down here is called an EL662. I could not find any information about that, but I reckon that because it's vicinity to the inductor and that diode, that it's part of the uh, boost circuit, or that's uh, boosting the voltage up to a higher level before uh, it goes out to LEDs. There's also a resistor here. It would not surprise me if that was a standard 5-volt boost circuit. This chip here is even more vague. It's got a large 9 and then a small 3-4 E36. I could not find any information about that at all. And uh, But I'm guessing from the fact that it's uh, got a very simple sort of... Uh, separated supply here, capacitor and resistor from the power supply. And also, it's got, um, that's just basically providing current limited and buffering just to give it a, a fairly uh, steady supply. And also the fact it's switching this transistor and it's got an input from this uh, button here. I'm guessing it's a microcontroller, a dedicated microcontroller that is doing this sort of three intensity thing tied into this button here. Um, and then that's just enabling this circuit here uh, with pulsive modulation. I don't think it's even, from the fact there's a transistor there, I think it's just switching the power completely and there's not that many tracks coming down. It's very hard to trace out because it's that horrible white circuit board that hides all the tracks under it and the only way you can actually see them is if you get it just the right angle to bounce light off it, which you're not even seeing that here. I'm not even sure if I could actually from this angle. Uh, you can see a slight end of it there. That when you reflect light off, you can see the sort of the difference between track and uh, circuit board without track. It's very hard to tell sometimes which is a track and which is just a valley between tracks. Um, it's pretty much what you'd expect. There were a little microcontroller, and then I thought the microcontroller might be controlling the uh, a control and an enable input on this. But keep in mind that it wants to uh, use as little power as possible. I think it's just physically turning the whole driver section off completely with this transistor. And that may also explain why there was a fairly lowish pulse of modulation frequency that resulted in this uh, rolling shutter effect at the lower intensities. But, um, it's simple, it's functional, and it certainly works. But uh, it's just a shame I couldn't actually find those uh, chips. They, they are possibly custom, I, I don't think that'll be custom, the boost one, but this will be custom programmed sp specific to the task. So um, interesting enough, but not over enlightening on the actual circuit board aspect.